Hello, it's Marco here. It has been a while since we have created the Hover Vehicle. So I think it's time to refresh uh, what we did back in 2018 and make it uh, yeah, even better. So this is what we are set out to do. We have a Hover Vehicle which can drive around. We have a boost to the speed. Uh, we can jump. Uh, and if I manage to flip it around, let me see. We should also be able to flip back into a straight position at the press of a button. If the vehicle flips over with the F, we can put it back into the straight position and keep driving. Okay, without further ado, Let's get started. Let's open as usual our Epic Launcher, go to library, and we'll be working with uh, Unreal Engine 5 Early Access 2. So let's run it. Once it's ready, let's choose games, a blank. And here let's give it a meaningful name over vehicle. 2022 and create. Okay, once we're back into the engine, let's dismiss this plugin. Uh, first things first, let's delete player start, which we will not need. And let's give ourselves a bit more room by increasing the size of the floor mesh. 20 by 20 should be enough to go around and drive our hover vehicle. Okay, so let's start by creating a folder, new folder. Let's call this over vehicle. And uh, let's import into it from Blender the mesh for the hover vehicle. I will provide a link to it. You will find it in the description below. Hover vehicle open. Let's see if everything has this and just press import. So we will get the hover vehicle mesh, which will appear in a moment, and the four materials, which are attached to it. So here it is. Let's check the collisions. And in Unreal Engine 5, they are under show, simple collisions. So this is what the engine has created for us, and it's yeah, good enough. The important thing is that it's symmetric. If we want or we are having problems, we can always replace it with uh, a cuboid, for example, so a box, a stretched box. But in this case, it looks good. So we can close this one. And now let's go to uh, content. We create another folder called Blueprints. And inside Blueprints, we right click uh, Blueprint class and let's create a pawn. Let's call this BP over vehicle. And let's start by going into it and we click add static mesh. And we drag it onto the root so it becomes the root. And then with F2, we rename it. We call it body. This is going to be the body of our over vehicle. And now on the right side, we click on static mesh and we select the hover vehicle static mesh. So here's what it looks like. And what we want to do is a few things. So number one, set it to simulate physics. That's very important because uh, our hover vehicle is going to be physics. Then we set the mass to 1000 kilos, so we make it a bit heavier, but that's exactly what we need. And then let's check that the collision presets are of a physics actor. Okay. For the moment, that's all we need here. We'll come back to this in a moment after we have created the various hover components. So let's close this one. Now back into Blueprints, uh, right click Blueprint class and let's choose Sync Component. We call this uh, over Component. So once we have created it, let's open our Hover Component. 
and open as full blueprint editor. Let's make sure that our class setting says that it's a sync component. So that's good. And the first thing we need to do on event begin play is to get a reference to the actor we will add this component to, which is our hover vehicle. So we will do this with get owner. And once we have the owning actor, we will retrieve its root component. Once we have the root component, we want to make sure that this root component simulates physics. And one way to do it is to cast it to primitive component, just to make sure it's able to simulate physics. And then we will promote this output to variable. We call it ref to body. And uh, um, if we find that this reference is valid, then we know that it's relating physics and we can use it. We can also check it, uh, by the way, and say it's simulating physics. So if this is simulating physics, then uh, we can keep going. Otherwise, we can check with the branch. And if it's false, we're going to set that reference to null. Okay we can do by simply adding this and leaving the input empty that was set it to null. So if we have a um, body for the hover vehicle, if it's not simulating physics, we can set the reference to null. Now, once we have a reference to the body of the vehicle on event tick, we're going to do the following. So let's take our reference with a get and right click and say convert to validated get. So this will check if the reference is valid or it's null, and if it's null, it will branch to is not valid. So nothing will happen. But in case it's valid, we want to uh, calculate the hover force to apply to our vehicle. So we're going to do a line trace by channel. And we are going to use the location the world location of this component itself, even if attached to the over vehicle has a still a world location, as a starting point for the trace. And then we will trace down along the Z direction of this component. So we need to get the up vector, get vector. And once we have it, we simply multiply it by and note that in ue5 uh, this nodes now default to a vector but you can change it so if you right click here convert pin to float okay the value we have to multiply it by uh, we will promote it to variable and we will call it over distance so this is the distance that we want the vehicle to keep from the ground Let's compile so we can set its value and let's put it to 100, which means one meter. Now from get world location, we subtract because remember that we want to trace down, not up. And we will connect the vector we just created by multiplying the upper vector by the over distance. And this will be the end of the trace. There's another thing that we have to do, so ensure that we are not tracing against the body, otherwise it will stop the traces. So what we will do is get owner. And this one is representing the actor. So once we connect, it will automatically add an array. And it will be an array with just one element, which is get owner. And uh, in this way, we'll ignore the uh, body of the vehicle and try to find the ground. Now, what we need to do next is check if a hit took place. So let's add the branch here and connect it to return value. So in case we have valid hit, it means that out hit is valid as well. So we can break it. Let's open it up and we have a lot of information in here, but the one we're interested in is called distance. So let's take a reference to the hover distance 
And what we're going to do is subtract from it. Remember, this is the height at which we want to hover over the ground, the distance that the trace has traveled. And this distance we can use to calculate a few things. So one is the spring portion of the hover component, and the other one is the damping, the damper portion of the hover component. So what we need to do is uh, um, take this and value and divide it by hover distance. And why do we do that? Is because we want to normalize the value. So what happens is that if the vehicle is higher than the maximum distance, distance will be equal to the hover distance because that's the same distance at which we are tracing. But if these two are the same, it means that uh, this result is zero. Say 100 minus 100 is zero. So zero divided by hover distance is still zero. So we know that uh, in this case, uh, our compression is zero, meaning that we're basically flying much higher above the ground. On the other hand, if distance is zero, so we are really squeezed onto the ground, over distance will be 100. 100 minus zero is 100, divided by 100 itself will be one. So this tells us that we have maximum compression, which is one, and that's the information that we need. So let's select these two with a Q to align them. And now we take the compression value, which remember now is between zero and one. And maybe let's put a note here to remind ourselves compression zero one. Let's multiply it by the stiffness of the spring. So let's add the multiplication and promote the variable. Let's call this one stiffness. And this is the first part, that's the first part of the hover force that we need to calculate. The second part require us to, requires us to know how quickly the compression is changing. In order to do that, uh, we need uh, to calculate the difference between the current compression and previous compression and uh, uh, divided by delta time. And then we can multiply the results by the damping factor. Okay. So let's give ourselves a new variable, which we're going to call of type float, of course, which we are going to call previous compression. So that's a compression at the previous frame. And basically, if this is a compression at this frame, we take it, we subtract from it the compression at the previous frame, which we haven't set yet, but we'll set it at the end of this frame. We divide the result by delta time and get where delta second is the function that returns delta time. And the result, again, we're going to multiply by factor. So right click, promote the variable, which is our damping factor. Now, this result and this result uh, need to be added together and they represent the total hover force. So the way we're going to do it is set everything Q to align. Let's take this one plus let's connect the result of the stiffness part. So that's the spring component. Q to align, now it's all great. And we will call these results a hover force. So we were coming from here, let's create the hover force variable, variable hover force, connect it to the through with a set. And then this is what will become the hover force. Okay. Now there is one last thing that we have to do. Remember that this previous compression, we need to update it from the current compression. And the uh, best way to do it is, now that we have calculated the hover force, uh, we can assign the value 
of the current compression to the previous compression. So I'm going to go up here, RER to other route node, drag RER to add another route node. And now I can connect it to the variable. Note that this line seems to be not horizontal. When that happens, it's a known visual bug of the editor. Well, we can get them straight. We select both of the Q and then they are straight. Okay, now that we have updated the previous compression and we have the hover force, we need to apply it to the body. So let's take a reference to the body. Let's add force at location. And the location is going to be the location of this component, hover component, once we have placed it onto the body and within the hover component vehicle actor. Give ourselves a bit more room here. Okay. So we take the up vector again, that's the up vector of this component. We multiply it by the force. So let's take the hover force. And once we connect it, the pin should also change to float. Perfect. And this is what we want to use as force. And as location, we want to use the location of this component, the word location, the word location under transforms. Okay. So this is the part that adds the hover force after having calculated it. Okay. Now what we want to do, well, compile and save, is to set some values for uh, stiffness and damping. And uh, we will start with uh, um, stiffness at this value. So we have 1000, and I don't know if you know, but you can do calculations within the input uh, boxes of the parameters within a real. So 1000 is our mass, 980 is uh, uh, gravitational acceleration in centimeters over second squared. And uh, uh, in principle, we should divide it by four because remember that we have four hover components sustaining a vehicle which has a mass of 1000 kilos. On the other hand, there is also the compression of the springs and damper that we have to take into account. And uh, that basically might go down to 030, 025. So that means that we can stay with this value to start with. We'll get 980,000. Remember that uh, values in a real are usually extremely large because of centimeters being used as the base unit for length. So let's um, use that to see how the component will behave once we activate it. The other thing that we want to do is um, maybe give ourselves the possibility to turn on and off uh, some form of debugging. So I'm going to add a Boolean variable, which we'll call B debug array. And we will use that one. So I'm dragging it onto the event graph and then I want to do a select. And select is a very handy node because once we connect it to the draw the back type, it will use the Boolean input that we have set to allow us to choose which value we want to use as draw the back type. So if uh, this is true, so if we want to debug array, we want to say for one frame, if it's false, we want to leave it to none. Now, Let's compile and save and put it to true so we can see the ray once we apply the over components to our vehicle. Okay, we are done here, except that remember damping is zero. We will set it uh, later. First, let's try to fine tune the stiffness part of it. So let's close this one and reopen our over vehicle. And now what we want to do is uh, add the four hover component to it. So I'm going to click on the add button. And now if I search for hover, we'll find our hover component. And this is a sync component, so it will attach directly to the body. 
and uh, let's give them some meaningful names. Uh, so let's use uh, uh, the same nomenclature that we use for the wheels of the vehicles. So over uh, front left, right click, duplicate, over front right, and then shift select both, right click, duplicate. So we have two, and this one we're going to call and sometimes the F2 for some reasons is not working. Rear left. And this one we're gonna call rear right. Okay. Now to make our job easier, let's switch the top perspective. And let's first select the front left. This is the front of the vehicle, so the front left is here. We're gonna drag it into position. And let's remember that's a 210 minus 160 so the front right has to be a 210 160 let's do the same for the rear left so that's pretty much at minus 200 160 let's see or minus 210 160 that's fine and this one will be at minus 210, 160. Okay, so we have a good symmetry. So the left components are on the left side. The right components are on the right side. Looks good. Now let's switch to the side view and adjust the height. So uh, we select them all and we can drag this pretty much here, which is where the um, hover forces should be originating from. Okay. Save. Uh, one more thing for stability. So let's go to the body and scroll down under physics. Let's open the advanced properties and we're going to lower the center of mass. For example, minus 40 might be a good volume and that helps with the stability. Okay, back to the event graph. We have nothing to do here because these are already acting on our vehicle. So we can click on the actor, scroll up, make sure that auto process is set to player zero, compile and save. And now we can place our actor, so our hover vehicle in the level, uh, take it a bit higher, respect to the floor and play. So as you can see, it's there, it's, it wobbles. Let's try to have a better view. And let's go back to our hover vehicle and we're gonna click on the body and attach a spring arm. And then click on the spring arm, press, press add and we're gonna add the camera. Okay, let's switch the viewport to see how that looks like and you see that the camera too much into the actor so we can take this up a bit uh, we can select the length of the screen spring arm to be 800 maybe and then we give it a bit of inclination 20 degrees pitch minus 20 degrees pitch actually compile and save and now we should have our own camera perfect and you see that we are already floating in the air even if uh, there isn't much stability, honestly. Um, let's see if, you know, with the damping part of it, we can make it more stable. So let's escape. Um, I want to go back in the vehicle, actually, and change the behavior of the spring arm. So I'm going to antique inherit pitch and roll, because otherwise the camera will be pitching and rolling with the vehicle, making us a bit sick. Okay better. So now let's go back into the hover components and um, our stiffness was uh, 980,000. We're going to copy this value, Ctrl C, and then into our damping, we're going to do Ctrl V and remove one zero. So it's 98,000. So that's a rule of thumb. You want to have the damping to be one tenth of the stiffness. And let's see if this is helping us. 
and you see that we have a good stability now. The only thing is that the vehicle is drifting around and very likely it is because the center of mass is a bit offset uh, toward the front. So that makes it you know, slightly inclined and uh, that makes it then move forward and accelerate forward. So what we want to do is two things. Um, remember that we also want lateral stability. So this has to behave a bit like a car. So what we're going to do is add a component to have lateral stability. So let's go back to our content browser, right click blueprint class. And this time we're going to use an acton component because there is no point in having the lateral stability component uh, uh, being a sync component, it doesn't need a location, so it can act on the vehicle as a rule. So actor component, BP lateral stabilizer, very complicated name. And then let's open it up. And then we're going to repeat basically the code we had before to get the reference to the body, so get owner. Drag out and root component, get root component. Now we're going to cast it to primitive component. Make sure it's something that can simulate physics. And let's right click on as primitive component, promote to variable, ref to body. Exact same thing we already did before. Uh, this time we're not going to check if it simulates physics uh, because if it doesn't anyway there will be no race and nothing works so let's assume that it does and now what we're going to do is again drag a reference to ref to body get get it uh, right click convert to validate the get so that's exactly as before and what we're going to do with the reference of the body is get physics linear velocity. So we're getting the velocity from the uh, physical component, basically, and uh, we will then take the right vector because we want to project that velocity along it. So we transform this one, which is a generic velocity for the physics body connected to this actor, to the component of the velocity along the right vector, meaning we're going to have the lateral velocity, which is what we want to control. So we're going to do dot. And that's how we project the vector onto a direction using the dot product. And uh, um, this value, we want to negate it. So I'm going to multiply by minus one. And the reason is the, if the velocity is on the right, so if we are drifting on the right, the force that we want to apply to eliminate that velocity has to be directed uh, opposite to the direction the velocity has, right? So it has to go to the left in this case. And uh, then we're going to add one more pin here and right click promote it to variable and we will call this variable speed to force factor, okay? We have to set the value of this parameter, but basically what it does is it takes the velocity and remember that this is uh, uh, then projected and transformed into a speed to a float, uh, which is in centimeters per second. And we are going to use this value to apply then the force okay, to the body to eliminate that drifting velocity. So we take a reference to the body, uh, not the set, we take a reference to the body, the get, and we say add force. And we're not using add force at location because we assume that the force is applied anyway at the center of mass of the body. And let's also take the right vector because that's the direction along which we want to apply this force and multiply it by the value that we calculated before, which is the speed times minus one to invert it times the speed factor. And that's the force that we want to apply to our body to eliminate that drifting. Okay. 
with that done, and this all is okay, perfect. A bit better, maybe this one can also go up here. Okay, it's not really nice. This crisscrossing that Q, I think it will do for the moment. We are ready to compile and save. Let's take the speed to force factor and let's start with the value of 1000. And let's see how that behaves. And we can always test it. And I'll show you in a moment how we do it. So let's close. Uh, remember that we have not applied, we have not added that component. So we reopen the actor, add, and that was called lateral stabilizer. So I'm going to call it stabilizer, lateral stabilizer. Once added to the vehicle and uh, note that since it's an actor component, it's not part of the hierarchy, it's just sitting at the bottom, which is fine. Now, we have added the component, which means it's already working, it's already active. In order to test it, what we can do is add, for example, um, incline to the level. So I'm going to add a cube and then make it bigger like this. Maybe move it a bit, place it onto the floor here. And now I'm going to rotate it slightly, so it becomes an incline. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's fine. Yeah. And now we take our over vehicle and we place it here to start with. And we also give it a bit of rotation so that it's on the incline. Let's switch to local coordinates. Okay, and let's see if by hitting play, I have a bit of lateral stability. And you see that it slides, but then it stops. So it doesn't slide laterally anymore. Uh, if we want to improve or increase actually the effect of the lateral, stabi lateral stabilizer, we can increase the speed to force factor. Let's go, for example, to 5000. It was 1000 before. Play again. Yeah, now it's stronger. And you see that it still drifts, but um, at lower speed. And of course, it still drifts forward. Because we have not added the movement component yet. Okay, that's what we're going to do next. In the meantime, if we want to do another test with the stabilizer, we can reopen it. Maybe let's stabilize it to. 7500 and again this is up to you you, know, you can test it depending on your scenarios and you know, your use cases yeah so this might be good enough as uh, lateral stability okay it's time to add then our movement component so right click in the content browser blueprint class there will be another actor component meaning it will act on the whole actor and we call it BP movement component. So we are mimicking a bit the movement component that uh, are found in cars or in the third person character. So let's double click to open it. And here for the third time, we're going to do the same thing as before. Get owner. And now you know the drill, the root component. Cast to primitive component. Perfect. Oops. Uh, voila. And then right click on as primitive component, promote variable. We're going to call it ref to body. So now we have a reference again to the body of the actor. Let's drag this down to give ourselves a bit more room. Let's drag this here in front of event tick, uh, do a get, and then right click, convert to validate the get. Okay, now we have a valid reference to uh, the body. Now, what we want to do to control the movement basically is to set uh, a target speed 
and then compare it with the current speed and also set a target angular speed so uh, to rotate the hover vehicle to pivot it and compare it with the target angular speed. So the target speed and the target angular speed will come from the uh, player controls. So we'll set the input events in a moment. But first, let's uh, write the code that we need to, to do that. So let's add a few variables. So one of type float is going to be our target speed. So this is the forward and backward speed. And then right click duplicate. We'll call it current speed. And then again, right click duplicate target angular speed and right click duplicate current angular speed okay with these uh, uh, four variables now we can write uh, a bit of code so what we want to do is uh, get a reference to our body and get its physics linear velocity and uh, with that we want also to get the forward vector because like before we're going to project this velocity which remember it's related to the wool actor to the physics body connected to the wool actor along the forward vector and you know that this is done with the dot product so dot And let's connect the other vector too. And this represents our current speed. So we take it from here, drag it onto the execution pin so it becomes a set automatically and connect. Now we want to do the same, but for the angular speed. So I'm not going to take a reference to the body anymore from there. I'm just taking the variable again, otherwise we are too far. And once I do a get, I will say get physics angular velocity in degrees. So let's work in degrees. And note that odd enough, uh, this is a function with execution pins, but this is a pure function, so it has no execution pins, which is interesting. Anyway, let's take the upper vector. Why the upper vector? Because that's the vector around which we are pivoting. Okay. That's the up vector of the body. And let's do a dot product. And basically this gives us the component of the angular velocity around the up vector, which basically is the U speed. Okay. We are signing this to current angular speed. Perfect. So now we know the current speed and the current angular speed of uh, um, our hover vehicle. And what we want to do is add a force to the body of the vehicle so that we reach the target speed starting from the current speed. And we will do the same for the uh, angular speed, but instead of adding a force, we will add the torque, which basically is a rotational force. Okay, so let's take again a reference to the body just to keep it clean. And then let me zoom in. We will do a add force and we are adding the force at the center of mass of the vehicle. So let's connect it. And then we are applying the force around the forward vector. So it's a longitudinal force. So we need to get that vector, so get forward vector. And once we have the forward vector, we are going to multiply it. Connect it. And what are we going to multiply it by? Well, that's very simple. So we're going to take the target speed, which we will set later based on the user input. Calculate the difference between the target speed and the current speed. Multiply it by a factor which is similar to what we did before for the lateral control. So I've added the multiplication and then I'm right clicking on this pin and say promote variable. And we're gonna call this 
speed to force factor. Okay. And this is the value that we are multiplying then the forward vector by in order to calculate the force that we need to apply. Okay. So note what happens if target speed is above current speed, this value is positive. Speed to force factor is always positive. So we are going to create a force which is directed along the forward vector pushing the vehicle forward. On the other hand, if target speed is smaller than current speed, so we are going too fast and we want to slow down, this will be negative, which means that uh, since speed to, force, uh, speed to force factor is always positive, this is also negative and we are going to have a force which basically slows down the vehicle. Okay, So that works also mathematically, this is exactly what we want. And next, uh, we're going to do the exact same thing, but for the rotational part, for the torque. So let's get ourselves again a reference to body. Let's do add torque in degrees, because we are all working with degrees. Remember that the torque that we need has to be directed around the up vector. So let's get ourselves the up vector and then multiply it and we get exactly the same thing that we did before, but for the rotational part by a value which will calculate taking the, like we did here, target angular speed minus the current angular speed multiplied by did someone say angular speed to for to torque factor? Yes, that's exactly what it is. So right click, promote to variable. We're gonna call this angular speed to torque factor because now we are calculating a torque. Let's drag it down. And this is what we're gonna connect to the multiplication of the up vector. Okay, now let's compile and save. And uh, um, we said that the current speed is calculated from um, the physics system, same for the current angular speed, target speed and target angular speed will be set by the player depending on how they want to move the hover vehicle. What we have not set are the speed to force factor and the angular speed to torque factors, okay? Let me anticipate to you that since Unreal uses centimeters as base unit for length, speed to force factor is gonna be a big number, let's say 10,000, and angular, to sp angular speed to torque factor is gonna be even bigger, and we want it to be 10,000 times 10,000. So remember that you can do calculations within uh, um, the interface. So don't be scared if you see very large numbers when working with torque and still large or a bit smaller when working with force, that's completely normal. Okay, so we compile and save. And basically this is what we need for this component. So let's go back to the actor or hover vehicle, click add and then let's find our movement component, custom BP movement component. Let's call it movement component, which is good enough. And now before we can use it, remember that we said that the target speed and angular speed are set from the input of the player. So we need to create uh, the uh, input events. So we go under edit, purchase settings, we scroll down to input and now we're going to create where it says axis mappings, click on plus and then open up. We're going to create a trust. I could spell it. Uh, we are going to create a trust 
input and we're going to assign to it so click here on the little keyboard sign and then press w that's the forward and then click on the sign again here click on the keyboard and then press s and now remember that this needs to be given a scale of minus one because it's in the opposite direction so that's backward and now click again on axis mappings let's call this one steer like it would be a car and the first steering button is d sorry click again and press d on the keyboard then add another one with the plus click on the keyboard and a and remember to give it a scale of minus one now in order to also be able to pivot with the camera around our vehicle i'm going to add other two axis mappings so one we'll call it look up and this time we're going to use the mouse y and then i will add another one which we'll call look right and in this case i'm going to use the mouse x Last but not least, we also want to be able to boost the speed of our vehicle with, uh, for example, the shift keys. So I'm going to add the action mapping this time, pressing the little plus close to it. And uh, let's call it speed boost. And as an action, maybe we want to click on the keyboard and use the right shift as a key to trigger the since we are playing with the WASD, we want to use the, the right shift to add speed boost. Okay, we're done here, so we can close. And now we are back into our actor and we can start adding the inputs. Okay, so right click on the event graph and let's add with the, start with the trust. So that's a trust event. What we want to do with the trust event is take the movement component and basically set the target speed. And we do it by taking the axis value and then multiplying it by a value which we have to determine. It depends on how fast you want your vehicle to move. So let's say, for example, 1000. And later on, we will also add the effect of the um, speed boost. But for the moment, let's stay like this. And now we do the same for the steering. So the event is called steer. Remember that let's drag a reference to the movement component. That's our custom movement component. We have set angular target angular speed. That's what we want to set. Let's connect it. And now with the axis, let's multiply it by a value, for example, 100. And connect it to the target angular speed. So whenever we press either thrust or steer, the axis value is multiplied by the respective value. And then the case of thrust, we are assigning the result of this calculation of target speed. In the case of uh, steering, we are assigning the result of this calculation to the target angular speed. Okay. Double check that we are possessing our, uh, our vehicle so we can control it, which is fine. And now let's compile and save. And let's go back to plane. And we should be able to drive the vehicle around. Let's wait for it to have slid down. And note one thing is no longer drifting forward because the movement component is also controlling. And if I press A, I can rotate on myself. If I press D, I rotate on the other direction. S moves us backward. W moves us forward. And we could also do a small jump. So that's pretty cool. Note that it drives a bit like a car. And uh, if we want to see this better, let's stop and 
press escape. Let's go back into the vehicle uh, blueprint and maybe add also the events for uh, rotating camera. So we're going to take a reference to the spring arm and do add relative rotation. Perfect. And now we're going to expand this node with the split struct pin. Select it, Ctrl W to duplicate it. Connect the second one also to the spring arm. And now let's give ourselves a bit more room and we're going to take in the two events. So one was called look up. Perfect. And look up is the pitch event. So we want to pitch the camera up and down. And then we're going to take the look right event. And the look right event is the yo because we are looking left and right. Compile and save. Let's close and now let's play. And you see that now I can pivot around my hover vehicle. So I can see how it behaves and I can also control it as we drive around. And it's very stable, basically it drives like a car because it has lateral stabilization, so it doesn't drift laterally. And it has a custom movement component, which makes it go left, right. There's one thing that I would like now to fix. So when I move forward, if I press D, I go right. And if I press A, I go left. But if I move backward, it's not behaving like a car because you will expect it to, um, you know, if, if I press A, it should move backward in that direction and I've pressed in the other. So we need basically to invert the controls when we are moving backward. And the way to do it is we're going to the over vehicle component. And if you look here at the steering axis, let's add a pin. And now we take the value of the trust. So we do get trust. And we want basically to use it to invert the sign of the steering whenever we go backward. Now, as we do that, we have a bit of a problem because when trust is zero, its sign will also be zero, but that means that the steering also becomes zero. So we'll not be able to pivot on ourselves. And let's try it. I'm just going to connect it as is. Okay. And save. And actually I should have sign function. Perfect. But the problem with the sign is that sign in our real can also be zero. So we're going to tweak this in a moment just to show you that this is not working. So if I move, it's fine. And now if I go backward, it steers like a car. So now A and D are inverted when I go backward. But if I stop and now I press A and D, I'm not longer rotating on my own because trust now is zero. It's sign is also zero. And uh, so I have no steering. How do we fix that? Well, we need the sign function which outputs one even when the input is zero. So we're going to make uh, one for ourselves. Or we can simply use a select. So what we can do is uh, get trust. If trust is zero, select. And basically what we're saying is if trust is zero, so this is true, we want the output to be one. Otherwise we want the output to be the sign function. So the traditional one, so we connect here. And now if I set this to one, okay, now when trust is zero, it will output one anyway. And if it's not zero, we'll output the sign, which is either plus one or minus one. Let's see if that works. Close compile, save, play. We're still sliding down, of course. But now, I can pivot on myself, even when standing still. 
And if I go backward with the A, it steers as a car. And the same with the D. And if I go forward, the same happens. So we're good to go. And we have full control of our vehicle. Now, a few other things that we might want to add, for example. So if our vehicle flips, for any reason our hover vehicle flips, we want to be able to bring it back into the upright position. And for that, we can add the functionality, which is, uh, yeah, rather easy to do. But before that, let's not forget our boost, by the way. So back into the hover vehicle. Let's uh, um, add the event for boost. So that was a speed boost. And basically, we are going to create ourselves a variable here, which will be a type float. And we call it boost multiplier. And yes, I haven't spelled it correctly. Multiplier. Perfect. Now we compile and we give it initially a value of 1. So you know that multiplying something by 1 is giving you the same value as before. So when the speed boost button is pressed, and remember we use the right shift for that, we are going to set the, mul the boost multiplier to 3, for example. So that's a 3 times speed multiplication. But if it's released, we're going to set it back to 1. Perfect. And now where we're going to use this value is if we go back to the trust, you remember that we were multiplying by 1000. Now we want to go faster. We have to multiply it for, you know, by a bigger value. And the value is exactly the uh, boost multiplier. So let's click here to add the pin and then drag the boost multiplier. Perfect. So once we press the button, instead of multiplying by 1000, we'll be multiplying by 3000. And when we release it, we're back to 1,000. Let's see how that works. And I think I'm going to put back the vehicle. Onto the flat ground. OK, good. And play. Perfect. So now W regular, shift. We have a higher speed. Leave the ships. Shift, higher speed, and you see that we also have collisions, which is good. But that's basically how we can add also a speed boost, see if it helps. And uh, yeah, we flipped, which basically it's a good introduction to the next function we want to add, which is a function basically to get us back upright whenever we flip. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to go into, again, the project settings. So edit project settings, input, and add another action mapping, which we call flip uh, back. And let's use with lack of fantasy the F key. So this is the key that we can use to Flip pass back into position. Now let's close that and let's open our hover vehicle blueprint. And maybe uh, down here, let's uh, right click. Remember that was called flip back. And what we're going to do um, on the flip back is basically add an impulse to uh, propel a bit up the hover vehicle. And of course, the impulse have to be along the negative up axis because remember that we are turned upside down. And then we will add the torque around the forward axis to flip us uh, ourselves under 80 degrees. So we are back into the upright position and we can you know, land again on the ground. So the way to do it is, um, uh, let's take a reference to body. Remember that now we are inside the hover vehicle actor. And we're going to do add impulse. And the reason we are doing uh, using add impulse is that remember that add force and add torque should be used within an event 
tick. So we are not on event tick here. We are outside. That's a one-off um, kick that we want to do give to our actor. So that's uh, um, how we do it with an impulse. Okay. So let's get the up vector. And it works only if you spell it correctly. And then we want to multiply this by a value which we need to determine. So I'm going to connect the output of the multiplication. I'm going to right click on this pin and say convert pin to float. And again, this is new in Unreal Engine 5. And uh, well, this has to be a negative value. So we know because we said that uh, the kick has to be along the negative up vector because we are flipped upside down. And it's probably uh, going to be a very large value. So let's try 10,000 times 10,000, something like that. Let's see how that works. And before we add the rotation, we can try this out. So let's close this after having compiled and save. That's F to go to our hover vehicle. And we are going to rotate it upside down to start with. So it falls onto the ground as we play. And now if we press F, yeah, now that's a very, very, very high impulse. So we need to make it smaller. So let's open that. Uh, let's take out one zero or two zeros. Let's take out two zeros. Compile and save. Play. And gets onto the ground. F. Yeah, that's good enough. So that kicks us up probably on two, three meters. And now we can add the flipping part. So back onto the over vehicle. Um, let's get ourselves another reference to the body just for cleanness of code. We want to put a delay because first we need to kick ourselves in the air and then we can apply the torque to flip us uh, um, 180 degrees around the x-axis. So let's use add angular impulse in degrees. And this is the equivalent, the rotation equivalent of adding an impulse. Also to be used outside of tick as a one-off. And now remember that we want to pivot around the forward axis, so get forward vector. We multiply this by a number, which we'll determine in a moment, and connect it to the impulse input of the torque. Right-click on this pin, convert to float. And now what would the value be? Well, let's try with uh, uh, you know, 10,000 times 10,000 and experiment with it and then see if uh, that's good enough. Close, play. Okay, let's kick ourselves. Yeah, you see that there is a spin, but this is not enough, which means that probably has to be much higher. Well, not much, but a bit higher. Um, let's put the two in front. Let's see if double works. Play. And you know, this phase is a bit of trials and error. F. No, still not enough. We need to have a faster spin. So I'm going to add the zero. Basically, I'm multiplying this by 10 by adding a zero at the end before the comma. Compile and save. And again, don't be scared if you see these huge numbers. That's normal when dealing with torque and torque impulses. Okay, cool, that worked. So we were able to flip ourselves. And of course, this will also work if you press F while you're upright, but then the vector is not in the right direction. And of course, it's just smashing you onto the floor. We can avoid that by, uh, for example, checking if, uh, uh, we are on the ground, we are flipped, 
uh, one way to check if we are flipped, for example, is to check uh, dot product between the up vector of uh, our vehicle and the up vector of the word. So let's go back here. And if we say, okay, we want to enable this flip back only if we are really, uh, you know, upside down. One way to do it is, let's take a body down here. Let's take the up vector. And then we can simply split this we don't even need a dot product actually. We can uh, um, split this and look at the Z value of the up vector. Oh, you know what? Now let's do it with the dot product. So recombine. Okay. Let's make a vector. Make vector. Which is up here. Let's make ourselves a vector word like vector yeah that, that's good and then let's calculate the dot product now if we are standing upright the dot product with uh, of the up vector of our actor with the up vector of the word which is zero zero one fixed will be positive okay if it's negative it means we are flipped so what we can do is in a branch and check if this up vector is negative is, is sorry if this dot product is negative so less than zero means we are flipped and then we can enable the flip back okay that's a quick way to do it maybe you know instead of saying zero we can even use a minus uh, zero two so we have a bit of guard uh, but that will work so save now let's see if we can still flip yes we can but now that we are right if i'm pressing the f key nothing happens because of course we are not flipped over brilliant now there is one last thing that i want to do but that's more cosmetic honestly uh, so first of all let's put back our poor hover vehicle in its upright position. Make sure it still works. Yeah, that's good. I want to go into the hover vehicle and take the material for the thruster and actually make it, make it a bit prettier, okay? So I'm gonna edit this parameter and choose maybe a light blue, something like this. That works. And then I want to make an emissive material, which um, pulsates a bit. So I'm gonna call it time and use the time function. And then let's multiply it by, for example, 0 0.2. So it's slower, okay. And then we can use a sine function to make it uh, pulsating. And then I'm going to add to it, uh, for example, a five to increase the level. And this one I will multiply by the material, the color that we have chosen in the material, and then plug it into the emissive color. So let's save and you see that it becomes a pulsating material and it's a bit subtle but uh, basically that uh, uh, that's what it does if we start to preview this node it's not very evident but basically this is what it does and now if we go back and look at our hover vehicle, yeah, you see that the thrusters as well as um, the hover components here, they are made now with this nice material. Okay. And yes, we can drive around. And you see that we also have a nice 
projection of the ground of that blue color which is cool and the last thing that i want to do is uh, go back into the hover component and remember to disable the debug ray so i'm gonna uncheck this compile and save close and here is your uh, brand new hover vehicle 2022 a bit of boost Let's jump you. Just make sure that you don't fall from the ground or create yourself a nice terrain and you can uh, over on that one. All right. I hope you have enjoyed it and uh, yes, yeah, you in the next tutorial. Bye.